Okay, Mark Herman's Churchill, the board game. A game of World War II for one to three people, or technically zero people if you don't want to run <laughs> all bots. Uh, and these one to three players must cooperate to defeat the Axis, Germany and Japan, in case you're wondering, but must compete to emerge as the top power in the post-war world. That's right. Now, this is the training scenario, which uh, starts in October 1944, so the war is well in hand. And you can see the fronts have advanced very close to Germany, close to German, um, Japan here, within B-29 range. Um, the China-Burma, they haven't done jack there, and neither have uh, the Russians towards Japan. <laughs> okay. Anyway, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play. I'm basically going to read <laughs> and play verbatim the illustrated example play in the of a play in the rule book. And the reason I want to do this is one, I don't think anyone's done it yet, and I think it's interesting. Uh, two, will give viewers, I think, a taste of the game, and you can tell if it's something you'd want. Yeah, it's available on GMT. And three, I'd like to hear somebody's thoughts on this, because what he has done is he's made this kind of uh, example of play. Instead of just being just a rules crank out, he kind of persona uh, writes as Churchill, and giving Churchill's thoughts as he goes through the um, uh, uh, scenario. And yeah, listen to this design note, and you tell me. Churchill is an easy game to grasp with simple mechanics, but we all learn differently. Some prefer a, prefer a detailed explanations that tend to be dry longer than it would be seem necessary, yet hopefully answer all questions on gameplay. The ru these rules are in the box, but I have taken the time to try a new path with a narrative set of rules masked as an illustrated example of play that hopefully allows for easier assimilation and are more interesting to read. So if you are a game, read these first and see if the mechanics of the game come to life. Then begin play using just this knowledge and the player aid chart. Worst case, you will miss a few fine points, but absorb the flow of the game. If this does not work for you, the traditional methods stand ready to teach you the game the old-fashioned way. Okay, a couple points on that. First, I want to reiterate that this is not a learn-to-play. Um, there are some on YouTube. I, if you want to learn that way, I, I recommend those. I actually used them before I, I saw this game. But like I said, I want to go through this and get your thoughts on it. Because... Um, uh, on the surface there, it looks like a very good way to teach this game in that it, it, one of the important things I think when teaching rules is to ground people in the game, into the narrative, into what you're doing, so you, you feel a connection to it. Uh, but I noticed in his next game, Pericles, which may, just maybe just because it was more complicated, he went back to kind of the tra traditional um, example of play. <laughs> so let's get started. So, I was thinking about doing a Winston Churchill impression while I read these rules. <laughs> yeah, I even went to some, uh, look, listened to some speeches to see if I could nail it down. Uh, also looked at the King's speech. Uh, there's, they got Winston Churchill there. I think he does, the actor there does a pretty good job. So, anyway. <laughs> no, no Churchill impression. Uh, for one, I can't really do it. And the second is, even if I could do it, I think it'd wear thin in about 30 seconds. So let's, 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 do it. let's do it just straight. Anyway, <laughs> we'll go through this um, player aid at the time. And let's get started. So it doesn't say here or in this extended example play, but you do deal seven cards to everyone at the start of every turn. And he starts here. Welcome. As Prime Minister, it is my happy task to steer you through the intricacies of power politics. My task is to see that the Axis powers are defeated, with Herr Hitler and Mr. Tojo getting their just rewards at the end of a rope. To do this, Roosevelt, Stalin, and I are working together to win the war. We meet periodically in the conference to plot 
the course of the war. This is the conference section here. We do this by discussing and debating issues that result in decisions that set dis uh, priorities for which our brave fighting forces receive logistic priority as we advance on our enemies. Simultaneously, we are supporting clandestine and partisan networks and their governments. That's all these and all these side countries here. And their governments in exile. My goal is to defeat the Axis power. Axis powers while creating the conditions that, while good for all, still benefit the Empire that I have sworn to protect. All right. So, the first thing that happens in any turn is we turn over the conference card, which is 1944 Moscow Tolstoy. Like I said, this is very late in the war uh, for the training scenario. And you may recognize this from Pericles. This is basically the Aristophanes card. And what this does, it kind of sets the stage for the entire turn. Uh, kind of throwing in wrinkles, as it were. And moving on to Churchill's narrative, let's go back to him. The conference card has five sections that we implement immediately. So, first we see the Green Band up there. Churchill slash Mount Mountain in Cairo must place one production in CBI Theater. Against my best wishes, I must send some of my value on scarce production to fl to fight in that backwater hellhole. Well, it's a good thing Twitter wasn't around when Churchill was. <laughs> yeah, this production will be converted into offensive support during the military phase. And so, if we go here, this is going to direct us to you in the uk only has three of these productions and so for the card to tell them you have to spend it over here is, is quite a quite a burden and so you see he's not cared about the cbi at all and you can see why churchill is not particularly keen on this because now he, ha he has to spend one in here for offensive support and you don't normally put the productions here but in this case you might forget uh, over because of, over the time, so you just put it here to remind you that one has to be there. Moving on, the northern flank. Uh, if less than three naval support in an Arctic theater, U-boats roll one d six. Okay, so Comrade Stalin will have to roll a six-sided die to see if our Murmansk colony and convoy. It's through, since we have not been able to shift sufficient naval forces into the Arctic. Unfortunately, he rolls a four. So the U, the convoy is sunk by U-boats. Jerry wins one here. Yes, so if we looked over here at the Arctic, uh, we see only one naval support. That is not enough. If it was three, he would get that, the Russians would get, the Soviets would get that automatically. But since it's less than three, he has to roll a dice, and he blew the, light of the dice roll. Okay. All right, the blue bland. Blue bland. <laughs> Roosevelt stays in Washington. Roosevelt is active, but during the conference, Roosevelt cannot advance an issue. can still debate. Franklin is too busy to make the visit himself, but his representatives know his mind, so we will see what is revealed during the conference. And there actually happens to be a chip for that, counter for that, that we will go ahead and just place on his marker right there to remind us that he can not debate issues. Or no, he can debate, he just can't advance issues. And that'll come up later. Moving on, on our card, the gray. And this is gonna, the gray is always gonna direct what the enemy is doing. We have received intelligent reports that the Japanese Navy is going to sortie with, army, with an army to support, to oppose our operations in the Philippines. This is the Philippine front. That's an army and a navy, and that's gonna. And most people I see just put these in the middle here. And so, put these here to show that they're gonna try to stymie the efforts to advance the front there. Moving on, finally to partisan dispute. While we have lit a fire in Europe, the flames often burn indiscriminately. As World War reaches its climax, some of our partisan friends are sorting out who will be in charge after peace. As it turns out, the six-sided die roll is a six. So, nothing of note, of course. And we will cover the pole mill table, which is that one right there, in a bit. All right. 
We are still in the agenda segment, and Churchill continues. At the beginning of each conference, we first have to set the agenda. I am randomly assigned seven of my 21 staff to assist me in the conference. I've decided to have my good friend, Lord Beaverbrook, lead the agenda committee. If he does a superior job over his American or Soviet counterparts, we will have an edge. It is our national characteristic that we are better than my fellow allies. The Imperial General Staff National Attribute. National characteristic here during the agenda segment. Plus one strength, so instead of a three, this will be a four for him. Sergio continues, while I'm on the subject, the Americans, by force of their material co contribution, arsenal demo of democracy, national, oh, that's not, where's that, hang on, sorry, <laughs> there it is, okay, national characteristic, arsenal of democracy, he wins all tie breaks, while the Soviets are tough negotiators, national characteristic called Nyet. And this gives them an edge anytime there's a debate. Not at this point. There's no plus one until we actually get into the debate. And that's their national characteristics. So what that means is everybody secretly chooses a card, places it down, and then there's a simultaneous reveal of each one. I chose Lord Beaver Beaverbrook. Three value, plus one for the national characteristics, so it's four. To lead our efforts as he discusses the issue with Soviet... Nikolai Volsineski, two, only worth a two, and the American Leo T. Crowley, value two as well. As it turns out, due to my staff's efforts, we prevail. And so when you win this first kind of card play, uh, that's going to let you um, boost, not only choose an issue, but like boost it to your side. So what he's doing here. So I chose one of the four available, Paul Military. Um, issues, and he's going to pick the two and two, and we'll get into what that is. And because he won by two against the highest card that he beat, that's a difference of four to two, so that's worth two. So this actually goes, starts here and goes one, two, towards the UK. They are currently winning that issue. And that concludes that little segment before the debates. But we're still choosing issues. Now, in an orderly manner, starting with Stalin to my left, so we're going clockwise whenever we're doing this um, debate. But we're not at the debate yet. We're just choosing issues at this point, and Stalin gets to choose, each one gets to choose two now, starting with Stalin. Stalin wants to discuss additional material support from the Americans for his advance on Germany, plus an additional pull mill political military issue. So these issues are placed at the center of the conference table. So Paul Mill 3 and U.S. production here. And they both go in the center. So nobody is winning them. If you see what happened here in the first round when we're, choose, uh, we're trying to beat each other, he got a leg up on one issue that he wants. Everyone else, everything else goes in the center of the, ta in the, center of the table. Nobody is winning them. Okay. Uh, for his part, Roosevelt, he's next, wants the Soviets to get involved in the advance on Japan, so he chooses USSR directed offensive, and the USSR declares war on Japan, placing these issues in the center of the table. There. And there. Again, nobody winning those yet. I desire to have a stronger say on European, European military strategy. That's his issue. And my dis need to discuss the structure of the post-war war world by also choosing the global issue. The agenda is now set. Time to fly to Moscow and continue our hard work at achieving victory. That ends the agenda segment of the conference phase. I'll leave the, click on the end card here to go to the next video on the meeting segment.